So there's a local commercial property in my area. About 10 years ago, they spent over a million dollars building this beautiful building. It just sold for $350,000. I looked at this building. I considered that I really couldn't justify what I would use it for, but I had a friend that went in and he made this offer. It was on the market for just over $500,000. He came in at about $350,000. You may say a low ball offer. Here's the thing. The seller jumped on it. Why they were paying taxes, they didn't want to deal with the roof and some of the issues after 10 years. Yeah, let's just say that my friend got an amazing deal. How did he get it? Because he simply had the courage, the audacity to ask the question. You see, successful people, they don't say, oh, I know they're going to say no. They're not mind readers. They know that if you have the courage, if you've got the cojones to go in there and simply ask the question. Guys, how many times in your life are you self-sabotaging yourself? You've been talking to that girl for nine months and you just haven't asked the question because you already know what she's going to, she's beautiful. She's going to say no. She's probably got a boyfriend. Why do you set up all these barriers? Just simply ask that question because guess what? The worst thing she's going to say is no. She's not going to go make fun of you with all of her friends. And even if she did, how does that affect you? You at least put yourself out there. You ask that question and you could live with those results. And that's the thing guys is you've got to have that strength, that courage to ask the question because that's how things are going to come your way. The next thing you're not going to hear a successful person say, it's not fair. And the people you hear saying this oftentimes may have been looked over for a promotion. They didn't get hired and they thought they should have because they had better qualifications than the person that knew the hiring manager. Here's the thing. Life is not fair. And any of you guys that have worked on a farm, you know, life isn't fair. Point being, is this is just nature. This is just simply the way things are. We want things. And I think as a society over the last thousand years, we've actually gotten a lot better. We're still not even close to perfect, but yeah, things are not fair in the society and they're never going to be when human beings are born with naturally different talents. There's just different things in life. When you look across the board, some people are born naturally with more height. So guess what? They stand a much better chance of playing professional basketball. If you're born, you're five foot two, five foot three, five foot four. As a man, you could argue, you know, that's not fair. There's so many things that are against me. I'm going to give up. Or you can say, you know what? I am going to find what is to my advantage. How can I leverage this? I'm going to work harder. I'm going to study harder. I'm going to own the business because they're not going to be able to discriminate against me because you know why? I'm going to own the darn thing. I'm going to be the guy in charge. And that type of drive, I mean, you look at the oak, the oak tree that grows the strongest. It's not the one that is in the shade. It's being fairly treated. It's the one that's out there in the open, that's having to deal with the rain, the elements, the sun, the winter, and it's out. it gets stronger because of the obstacles and the hardship it has to overcome. You should be thankful for all the things that are thrown at you. Don't ask to be, you know, for life to be easy. Ask for the strength to overcome the obstacles in your way. Next up, successful guys, they don't say yes or maybe when they mean no. Seriously, they just say no to people and no is their default answer. They're busy people. They've got a lot on their plate and they are just very hesitant to give somebody a yes. Now, they don't maybe just say no to everything, but they do say, you know what? I can't take that on right now or I can't give you a decision. Follow up with me in a week, in two weeks. That's better than a maybe. But really, the vast majority of the time, they realize that they can only take so many things on and it's better for you to be absolute with your word. You don't want to be a flake. You don't want to be that guy that says yes and then never follows through. And believe me, this is tough because as you start to have success, as you start to do better, as you start to be known as that guy that's out there making things happen, people approach you and you have to start saying no, not because you don't want to do it, but simply you can't do it because you've already got everything scheduled out and you're going to have to start making a decision. And another powerful thing, when you start saying no, you start opening yourself up to actually taking on better opportunities because you free up that time and the opportunities you do have on your plate, the things you're working on now, you can give more fully your attention. This is the way it's always been done. Successful people never say that. In fact, they realize that within chaos is opportunity. So many people with what's going on in the world right now, they're, they're just saying, oh my gosh, like what happened to this world? What I'm saying, and I know a lot of my other friends that are business owners, what we're all saying is, wow, look at all of the opportunity. Because with all this upheaval, with all this change, with things just being uncertain, 
many people, most people are going to default to fear. They're going to fall into this analysis paralysis and they're going to be sitting back waiting for life to happen to them. Versus if you have the courage to go out there and start going after things, look at the new opportunity and they go out and they jump on that. Now, gents, I know you've got an opinion, so let me hear it down in the comments. What could I have done to make this video better? What did you like? What did you not like? I want to hear from you and I go down and I read all the comments and the best part is in future videos, I may take your comment, may take the information you put down there and use it. So, let me know. I want to hear from you down below. Now, some of you guys are probably saying, Antonio, I can't do that and I hate to say it, but that right there is the next one. Successful people don't say that they can't. They realize that anything is possible. Seriously, going to the moon, if you would have told people 200 years ago, well, that's not practical. There's no way the human beings are ever going to go to the moon. But we did it. And how did we do it? Because all of a sudden, you, accept, you had men out there, you had women that said, I'm not going to accept that I can't. They're going to find a way. And I'm not saying that you can always find a way yourself. But you can maybe explain, okay, I don't know how to figure out that algorithm and how to do that, but I do know how to do this. Or maybe we can go find somebody who can. We can partner with them. The thing is, whether or not you believe you can do something or you can't, Henry Ford said, you're probably right. And that's the limitation. You don't want to be around people that are going to tell you, oh, that's not practical. Because here's the thing. Whenever you stick with practical goals, whenever you try to just keep everything in line with, hey, what you think you can do, you're never going to push yourself beyond. You're never going to go out there and see what your limit is. Anyone that's ever ran a marathon, you know, even if you didn't finish that marathon, you at least know what your limit is. You hit that 20 mile, 22 mile mark and you failed. You had to stop or did you? You kept walking. You actually completed that marathon, but you realized I got to train harder. I, I just couldn't get past the wall. That's why they call it the wall because when you hit it, you realize, what's your body, what you're truly capable of and then you say, you know what, did I give everything or can I go back and train more and be able to overcome it? So, people that say they can't, they can't do something to me, it's a lack of creativity. It's a lack of actually looking at all the options, looking at everyone that's around you and yeah, I just, I just hate that word to be honest. And there's a word I hate even more than I can't and that is, I'm waiting. So, successful people don't say that they're waiting on something and if they do, they always have that I gave this person a deadline and once they have it to me then, you know, we'll move forward. But if you just say, oh no, yeah, I sent it over there and I'm just waiting to hear back from them. I absolutely hate this because to me, this is something who knows what time frame. Understand that if you don't set a time frame on something, there's no priority. There's, there's no drive. There's no reason that this is going to get done quickly. And if anyone that's ever managed a project knows a project can go on for as long as people put it to the side, procrastinate, uh, it's not their top priority. I've seen projects that should take one day go on for a month and why? Because people are going back and forth on email. If you want to be successful, don't say you're waiting on things set deadlines and hold people to their deadlines. And better yet, run a sprint which is simply you working in the same proximity with someone else to make things happen. Find a way to actually help that person to say, hey, is there something I can do to make this go faster? But gentlemen, just don't fall into the trap of saying, I'm waiting. Next up on the list, it's not my fault. And I know there's tons of craziness going on out there. But if you always say, it's not my fault and you try to put the blame on others, on the current situation, on all these other things that are outside of your control, what is in your control? Basically, you are giving away the power. I'm not saying that you got to take the blame for everything, but I am saying if you can say, you know what? There was a bit probably was in my control. I could have saved more. I could have done this more. I, did I really need to have all multiple vehicles? Did I really need to be stretching myself at this point? Yeah, maybe I'm out of work right now, but is there something I can sell? Maybe this is the right time to start a business that yes, is not going to make money for me immediately, but I can, I can figure it out. Maybe I need to get into sales because I was pretty good at that a decade ago and I know if I get into this and I can help somebody sell, then all of a sudden I can get paid quickly. There are opportunities, but when you say it's not your fault, when you say it's not me to blame, all of a sudden you give away your power and I want you to take some of that power back so that you can go out there and make a positive change in your life. Next up, stop saying that you're going to try. Do or do not. I think Yoda said that, but I'm going to steal a word from my good friend John Sephoric over at The Wealthy Gardener. He talks about the sacred effort and the sacred effort is when you give everything that you've got and you make it happen. Seriously, guys, 
We think that we're giving a sacred effort at work, maybe in our job search, maybe out there looking to, you know, to run our business. But are you really, if somebody put a gun to your head and say, Hey, could you put in more hours? Could you do more? If you are powerless to say, "Ah, I did everything I could. I, I gave every single waking hour to this mission and you just got to pull the trigger. If that's your answer, then you gave your sacred effort. But I think most of us, me included, we're going to say, gosh, well, maybe I did spend a little, you know, an hour on YouTube, you know, just puddling around. Maybe I did spend 30 minutes just, you know, in bed longer than I needed to. Maybe I did waste that time, you know, whatever it was. Here's the thing. Very rarely, very rarely do we ever give the sacred effort. But if you could give the sacred effort to the things that matter in your life, all of a sudden you would be able to achieve the impossible. Another excuse a lot of us use is that I don't have enough time. I know I've used this one, but if you read the biographies of successful men, you look throughout history, we've all had the same amount of time, really 24 hours a day. How is it that Thomas Edison, that Bill Gates, that Henry Ford, that Usain Bolt was able to achieve what they were able to achieve? And I'm going to use Usain Bolt because we just read his biography, my son and I, and I realized I wasn't making time. I wasn't prioritizing him and taking him up in the mornings to the school to run sprints. And that's the thing is that you need to make it a priority. What is truly important, I've talked about the priority matrix, guys, build out a priority matrix. Every morning, ask yourself, what is the important thing that if I get this done, it's urgent and it's important and this is going to be the big win in the day. I know for me, it has now become the 90 minutes I spend with my son working on his sprints because he wants to be faster. He wants to break the school record on the 40 and he was close. But the thing is, I realized I wasn't making that a priority. I have the time. I was wasting it doing other things. Yes, on my phone, checking out Facebook, yada, yada, yada. You know what it comes down to it? my kids, my family, my wife, I don't want to just pay them lip service. I want to give them my time and my devotion. And so I realized, you know what? Yeah, it's the middle of my morning, one of the most important parts of my day, but I need to give it to the most important people. So we started putting that in there. Gentlemen, what is your priority? Don't say that you don't have time. Be honest with your kids. Be honest with your wife. You're not a priority. Yeah, you don't want to say that. And when you have to say that, all of a sudden you realize that you're giving priority to maybe that meeting that, why is your boss running that meeting for 90, 120 minutes? Ask them, is there a way to shorten this down so that I can get more work done so that we accomplish mission? You know what? I don't know too many bosses that are going to say, well, you know what? Let's find a way to do that because you're, because I want to, because you're going to make him look better. And that's what you want to do. Find a way where you can cut. Because I used to have really long meetings. Make the priority the priority. The next thing you're never going to hear successful people say, I've never failed. Here's the thing. If you put yourself out there, you are going to fall. You are going to slip down. You are going to deal with failure. How to overcome failure? Gentlemen, I want you to check out this video right here. I made this video a while back. Didn't get crazy views. I thought it was a great video talking about how to overcome failure failure, how to build resiliency. This really isn't talked about, but this is one of the most powerful secrets to success, being able to pick yourself back up. So guys, go check out this video. It is a solid video. And let me know what you think down in the comments.